Suicide, which some viewers may find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. The isolation has created what I believe and what I worry and what I'm warning every parent in America tonight. An emotional tsunami that is sweeping this nation, and I'm very concerned about it. The next health crisis triggered by COVID-19 may actually be a wave of suicides. Suicide rates are at the highest since World War II. The government has only given about $500 million to this mental health problem, where they've given $16 billion to the airline industry. 41 days ago, my, my young 12-year-old boy, uh, three days before his 13th birthday, uh, took his life. The second leading cause of death in the United States for 10 to 14-year-olds is suicide. The second leading cause of death of 15 to 24 year olds is suicide. 25 to 34 year olds is suicide. It's a new bubble out. Her name is Tawala. Yeah. Oh my God. It was over there on the wall. Hey, it's all good. There you go. Everybody smile now. <laughs> eight-year-old daughter came down the stairs and said he did hung himself and I ran upstairs I tried I want nobody ever feels to see what I saw and to feel his pain I want nobody special bond between a father and a son and um, I'm gonna take him hunting and go fishing in my first house we had a pond in our backyard and I remember taking the paddle boat out and we'd go fishing all the time just in this little pond and just spending time with him. Me and Hayden would do a lot of mother-son time too. He was very into shoes. Every time we went shopping, we had to look at shoes, and he'd end up talking me into buying another pair of shoes. We play video games. He also like really liked being outside. <laughs> We'd play basketball. We'd just do a lot of stuff together. He loved having his friends and family around, and he was a special kid. Most importantly, just to see his smile. Something that I'll, I'll cherish for the rest of my life. This last Christmas, he wanted to get a new monitor, and he got it, was very excited about it. In February this year, you know, you get frustrated at games. It's just like sports. But he had done something messed up in Fortnite, done something wrong of some sort, and turned around and um, took that controller and threw it over his shoulder. Um, and not meaning to, certainly he regretted it, hit right smack in the middle of that monitor, broke it came down to us and told us, yeah, you know, I said, I could care less about the monitor, but I do care how you act. Now, about three weeks ago, my wife bought him a new monitor. Not nearly as nice, not nearly as good. As we found out, he had broke his monitor again. And in that impulse of emotion and anger at himself, scared to get in trouble, ruined his birthday present that he was so excited about, his connection to his friends, potentially, you know. He made a decision and um, walked into the closet and neither in this impulse of anger did it or he got himself in a situation he couldn't get out of. Tell me exactly what happened. The son hung himself. Give him CPR. Stop breathing. Count with me, yeah. sir. One, two, yeah. three, four. Keep doing them, sir, okay? One, yeah. two, yeah. three, four. Yeah. One, two, yeah. three, four. Yeah. One, yeah. two. Yeah. One, yeah. two. Yeah. It's gone. It's permanent. It's freaking permanent. 
and you don't even know what to think or how to feel and you're mad, you're angry, you're you're shocked, you're sad, you're questioning everything, you're mad at yourself, the guilt, let him down. Um Let him down. We've had two five-year-olds in our clinic who were suicidal. So my experience with suicide has been with children as young as five. It is unimaginable to think of a child killing themselves. I think parents cannot imagine it. And so that's probably one of the reasons a lot of parents don't want to talk to their children about suicide, because they can't even imagine their child being exposed to it or even themselves having that kind of impulse. Young people, you know, tend to not have the kind of resources that adults do, whether it's internal or external. You know, they don't have the life experience to know that they'll make it through a breakup or having disappointed somebody. And we don't know what happened with Hayden exactly, but I think it's interesting that he was so scared of disappointing his dad and disappointing his family that he did something to escape from that situation. We have to have those difficult conversations and do it a safe way not talking about explicit means, but talking about just the idea of suicide. And if things got so bad that you'd want to kill yourself or you'd think about harming yourself, what could we do in that moment? I would want to know, I think letting them know that no matter what happens, you would never want them to harm themselves and that it will be okay, we will figure it out. But in that moment, what can you do? Come get mommy and daddy, you reach out to a trusted adult, do something to distract, to delay, to soothe yourself in that moment until you can get somebody to come in and kind of help you with that situation. I've attempted suicide about five or six times. The first time I attempted suicide, uh, I was probably around Hayden's age. He should talk to somebody if he were be thinking about that. He should have talked to somebody. It's not a joke. If you're feeling serious about it, get help. There's always the hotlines that people can call. Call one of them if you don't feel comfortable. It's anonymous. Didn't tell anyone I did it. Didn't get any help after that. I wonder if getting the help at that younger age would have helped me now. Step one is you gotta have a conversation, a very frank conversation. Don't be afraid to talk about it. We have to use the word suicide. We have to use it as early as you would start talking about feelings or you would be talking about you know, ways of behaving, like expectations of behavior in school. You would also talk about, well, if somebody hurts your feelings, you know, my, I'm gonna expect you to talk to me about that. I wanna know what you're thinking. I don't want you to hold it in. There are a lot of families who are actually resolving a lot of family conflict. They're actually spending a lot of good family time together having these deep conversations. This is an opportunity for families to really talk about things that maybe are unexplored. In Hayden's case, I think if he has a little few more skills, that when that life's perfect storm of all this stuff happens, you know, maybe he makes a different decision. You gotta talk. You gotta have conversations. Conversations matter. We got a little piece of his, of, of his hair. I know this is emotional, but um, we want this tree to become a part of him. And uh, Yeah. <laughs>
Did you put it in there? Yep. If Aiden was here today, what would you say to him? It's not a way out. It's just temporary relief for them. It hurts their family. It upsets everybody around them. I'd say hate me. And then it's a miss you and I love you. Don't ever leave Nana again. <laughs> you know, somebody just take my feelings into account. I want I want my boy back, you know, my little fishing buddy, so it's tough. I miss him and What can you say? I miss him and I love him. Sorry you ever felt like he had to do that. <laughs> this makes me feel horrible. And I have to live with it every day. I feel like it's my fault. It's Brad's fault. It's our fault. It was maybe our, our marriage. I don't know. We blame it on everything. And you go through all the emotions of should have done this better or should have done that. And, Obviously, it's too late, but... Hayden didn't come tell me he broke his monitor. I don't care about a monitor, man. I, I don't care about a monitor. I care about you. Um, and he didn't. Conversations matter. Okay, hi, guys. I'm with my friend Jacob, and we're going to do the um, a three-point challenge. I haven't been in shape lately, so... Like and subscribe, and so that'll be at the end of our vlog, so bye. Dear Hayden, we're sorry we let you down. You didn't deserve this. We should have been there for you. This wasn't your fault. We didn't know how to have that conversation with you. We didn't know we needed to. We didn't know you weren't safe in your own room. We're sorry we let you down. So we should ask ourselves, why? Why are children still taking their own lives? Suicide is still the second leading cause of death for 11 to 17 year olds. And we're not talking about it. So we should all start now. This could happen to you. Grandparents and parents, start the conversation. Don't let suicide finish it. Talk to your kids. Ask your kids if they've experienced disappointments and hurts, if they feel depressed, if they've ever thought about taking their life. If they say yes to any of these, take it seriously and create a plan together should they ever feel like harming themselves. Let's stop reading statistics and start preventing them. Conversations matter. Kids, talk more. Parents, listen. No one should be almost 13. Every Hayden deserves to see tomorrow. We can do better. We will do better. If you are even thinking about taking your life, please tell someone now. Call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255 or text HOME to 741-741 to reach the crisis text line. Thank you.